Hi, in this video we're going to revisit the vacuum pickup tool. So where we left it in the previous video, which you can view here if you didn't watch it before, um, is that I had a system where I'd got this vacuum pickup tool connected up to a pump and the solenoid and the foot pedal and we were able to successfully pick and place parts from a component tape like this as opposed to using tweezers where you can't normally get your tweezers in here. So what I've done now is I've just had a PCB made by JLC PCB and if you watch the video on the best soldering station uh, you will have seen me starting to assemble this PCB but we'll have a look at the schematic for this very shortly. And I've also started preparing a box for all of the parts. I did pick up another pump off eBay. This one's quite a bit bigger and therefore um, I've actually not got that much space inside the caseworks for everything. It's going to be a little bit of a squeeze. Uh, we've got a little 24 volt power supply which is going to sit at the back and that will power the electronics and it's the right voltage to apply power to the solenoid. The pump is powered by mains so we've got some relays on the board uh, and then we've got a few other bits and bobs like a, an IEC connector for power, a power switch on the front um, and we've got things like a dial to set how long it takes before the pump turns off and that kind of thing. Right so here we have the board from JLC PCB and you can see here I've gone for the blue finish with the immersion gold on the exposed parts and the reason that I've chosen the immersion gold over hot air solder leveled finish is just that uh, with surface mount parts it means that you get them sitting flat against the PCB because you've got a nice flat surface. The hot air solder leveled finish can be a little bit uneven and when you're assembling these parts by hand um, it's quite difficult to get all of the pads to contact the leads on your multi-pin parts. But you can see it's a really nice looking board. Uh, we've got the 24 volts coming in at the top here which is the correct voltage for the relays and also for the solenoid and then we've got a voltage regulator um, which drops down the voltage to 3.3 volts for the microcontroller. Uh, this is the part that's going to be switching the mains for the vacuum pump so I've got an anti-tracking slot here just separating the ground plane from the 230 volt connections here and also the ground plane has been cut away in this section. So here we have the schematic for the board and actually it's way over complicated really for what we need. The only reason that I've gone with making a PCB is that in the case of using a little vacuum pump like this, um, the pump would be running the whole time that the device was turned on and the main feature that I wanted was if the foot pedal hadn't been pressed for a certain period of time uh, then the pump would turn off just to save life and power. But um, what we've got on the board here is basically the 24 volt supply in uh, we've got a reverse protection diode into a bulk capacitor. We've got a little resistor here just to drop some of the power so that not all of the heat is dissipated by the 3.3 volt regulator. And then the whole circuit is based around a PIC 18F13K22. So there's not much going on here. Basically we've got the in-circuit programming header which just connects to the memory clear lines PGC and PGD. And then we've got the two outputs here for the solenoid and also for the vacuum pump. So this is just two open collector transistors driving the coil with a reverse protection diode across it and then we've also got an LED on the board just to indicate the status of those relays. And then we've got an input from the foot pedal and that's just a pull up resistor and the foot pedal itself just switches that down to ground uh, so it's actually an active low signal into the microcontroller. And then we've just got a little bit of analog electronics here so this is basically just a buffer and a filter and that takes in the input from a potentiometer that's on the front of the device and that sets how long it is before the pump turns off after releasing the foot pedal. So let's start assembling this PCB.
Right, so here we've got the fully assembled board. I've given it a clean, and you can see now it's all looking really good. The general assembly method was to apply solder to one pad, attach the component, and reflow that solder again, and then apply solder to the other side of the component. The problem with that method is, and as you probably saw on the microscope images, that first pad gets reflowed twice, and on the second time the flux has basically gone. Um, and you end up with quite a dry joint. So then what you do after you've assembled all of the parts is just to go around and apply a little bit more solder to the first pad and then you get a nice looking joints like this. Right, so I've just about got everything in there. Um, I've put some felt around the pump just to stop it rattling against the chassis uh, and I've um, just added a little bit of extra insulation to the uh, mains wires that are coming from the pump because they're a little bit on the thin side. I didn't print a label for the back, it's sort of really a prototype, I'm not you know, going to try and make this look too nice. Um, but we've got the foot pedal connection at the back, the mains input, um, the power switch at the front, an LED which is slightly uh, off from the label so another annoyance there. The knob for the uh, potentiometer hasn't turned up yet, so that's just going to be a stick sticking out. And then we've got our connection to our vacuum tool. Right, so just to make sure that this is safe, the first thing that we want to do is make sure that the chassis of the device is properly connected to the mains pin on the plug. So we've set the Fluke multifunction tester to continuity. And we'll put one probe on the earth pin and one on, um, let's do it on the PCB mount because uh, that's connected to the chassis. And there you go, you can see we get a reasonably low reading for continuity there. And then we can do a test for insulation resistance. And that's making sure that we've got insulation between mains earth and uh, either of the two line conductors. So if I put this across the two terminals here, that's just about touching here. And what we'll do is apply 500 volts. And you can see it's unable to measure the impedance basically, which means that we've got an open circuit between mains earth and the phase and neutral conductors. So that's good. Uh, one last test that we can do is do the same test um, but test it between something on the extra low voltage side of the board just to make sure that when we plug in our foot pedal we're not going to get a shock. So uh, I'll try and clip this onto here. I'll set it to continuity first just in case it's a dead short. And no, nothing there. So we'll do an insulation test. And there we go. So f greater than 500 mega ohms between uh, the live and neutral pins and anything on the extra low voltage side. So we should be able to plug this in now. Right, so I'm not going to talk through the firmware. I have programmed it on the board while it was on the bench, but I've not tested this all together. If you want to take a look at the firmware, you can click on the link up here and that'll take you to my website where I've uploaded it. Um, but it's, uh, I warn you, it's not particularly pretty. It's there just to do the job. Um, so we've got the foot pedal plugged in, we've got the dial down at minimum, mains connected, so hopefully if we turn this on we should get a red light. Yeah, and that means power's on. And if I press the foot pedal with this on minimum, essentially the pump should follow the foot pedal as well as the solenoid. So if I press it down, and then if I release it, it should turn off. And then if I add um, some time onto the timeout, hopefully the pump should overrun. Um, after releasing the pedal. Add a little bit more. There we go, so that seems to work. And if I give it a bit more time, it will stay on for longer. And the whole time that the pump's on, you can continue pressing the foot pedal. And the solenoid activates, but it keeps the pump running. go. So the pump is a little bit loud. I think actually it's mainly air noise so that might change once we've got the cover on and the tool attached. So that's it with the lid on and I think it looks fairly neat. It's at least uh, a little bit better than it all hanging all over the bench and on the floor. It keeps it all self-contained so I don't have to assemble it every time that I want to use it. So uh, let's give it a little go at just uh, picking up some of these 0805 components out of a tape. Right so let's have a quick go at picking up and placing these parts.
and it looks like we can pick up some larger packages as well. The extra pump seems to have a bit more power in comparison to the old one. So there we go, I think that's pretty good. So I think I'm basically going to be using this device now for most of my S&D assembly work. It should make things a lot quicker and easier because what happens is you've got all of your different uh, component values and you can't get in here with tweezers. So you tip them out onto your bench, half of them end up the wrong way round and then you have to try and flip them over uh, to be the correct way round. And if you care about it, you might want all your numbers lined up in the same direction. So, you know, all of that takes time, whereas you can just come in with your pickup tool, pick it out the tape, place it on your board, you know, and you can just keep doing that for all different components. And if you've got all of these um, tapes lined up for all your different component values, you can just rip the top of the tape off um, and assemble the board really quickly. So hopefully you found that useful. I'll upload all of the design files and don't forget to think about using JLC PCB for your PCBs. Uh, but leave any comments down below, any suggestions, criticisms or whatever. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching.